Hi. Right, before I start, I need to give a nod to a couple of other videos. Unfortunately, one of them I can't find. I think it was an interview with George Newry from Coast to Coast or one of their other channels. The video was of a guy who had a theory that the blocks of the pyramids were made from a form of concrete, which I half agree with. I do believe it, it is a concrete structure, but the blocks are a result of erosion and not by design. But like I say, I can't find the video, so I can't give the guy a recommendation, and I apologise for that. Then somebody recommended this guy, Wise Up, in the comments section. And I, I love this guy's videos. I think he's great. I disagree with a lot of what he posts, but when it comes to concrete and rebar, I'm right with him. He's done a few videos on Egypt. Well worth taking a look. On the downside, <coughs> I'm not as original as I thought I was. So in this video, I'm going to be adding to this theory that the pyramids are made from concrete and pointing out a couple of things I haven't heard other people mention. So hopefully something original. First, I need to cl clarify what I mean by concrete. And that is a filler such as rubble or rocks, etc. mixed with a bonding agent like cement, a glue of some kind. Now, the chemical makeup of this concrete and cement, I don't know what they are. And at this moment in time, I'm not too concerned with that. Secondly, before I start, I think you need to realise that Egypt is like doing a thousand piece jigsaw without knowing what the jigsaw is and only having five pieces. You can have as many theories as you like. You may even guess right, but there is no way to know for sure. It has been messed about with so much and so many things are missing, you're not going to get any definitive answers. And at the end of the day, you've only got belief. Alright, so let's get started. Now, my speciality is in coastal erosion. And there are a lot of features that take hundreds of years or thousands of years to create. So obviously, no human being has seen these processes from start to finish. So we use logical assumptions taken from our observations. Now most of the time these are sensible logical assumptions to make. Not always, but most most times they are. We don't just do this with coastal features, we do this with the life cycle of stars. A process that takes billions of years. And again, logical assumptions are made. And this is what I'm going to do with the pyramids. I'm going to highlight three stages of erosion that has led to the appearance of blocks. So first, let's take a quick look at modern buildings. Here, you can see how a layer of concrete is actually blocks, and the erosion on the pyramids is concentrated at these weak points within the concrete slabs. And over thousands of years of being sandblasted, these weak points have totally eroded, leaving blocks. So that's the modern concrete building. Now, We'll take a look at the pyramids. Now this, some people call it bedrock. If you want to believe that, then that's your choice. But to me, this is as close to the original look of the pyramids as we can get. This is in a corner facing away from the desert and low down, so it has been protected from thousands of years of sandblasting. But if you look closely, you can see the seams and how blocks are eventually going to form. Now we move to the second stage of erosion. Not quite a block, but not a complete slab either. If you do believe they carried blocks up to the top of the pyramid, then why carry big blocks all the way up here and leave small uh, blocks near the bottom? Surely use the small blocks near the top, but apparently not. Whilst we're here, we'll take a good look at the blocks. There is no standard size. They're all different sizes. Why? If you're carving these and planning a structure this big to be made from blocks, wouldn't you want the, to make those blocks all a similar size? And again, apparently not. So the third and final stage of erosion is the blocks themselves. 
To me, it's clear. It's poured concrete and the block theory is utter nonsense. I'm not saying I've proved it. I'm just adding more evidence to the theory. So if you do believe they are concrete and we take a look at similar buildings we construct today, then we can ask, what do we encase in concrete? If the pyramids were modern construction, it would more than likely be to protect the outside world from whatever is inside. In our modern world, that would be uranium or high energy particles. So is this what the pyramids were used for? I don't know. But whatever theory you come up with, you have to include all three main pyramids because this is a pyramid complex. I know we are told they were built at different times, but I don't believe that. I think they were built together to serve a function. And if you're going to explain away the Great Pyramid as some sort of power station, then you have to explain the function of the other two pyramids. That's my opinion anyway. It would be it would be good to take a Geiger counter into the pyramid, see what happens. And if you know anybody who's done that, please leave a comment. Let me know the results. I'd be interested. So that's it for the concrete thing. But I want to finish with a few other things I've noticed. First, this isn't erosion. It's vandalism. Somebody has climbed up here and bashed these casing stones. Why? No idea. The most logical explanation would be to retrieve something valuable like gold or some sort of precious metal maybe or to remove information maybe i don't know whatever the reason this is quite a large undertaking to climb up and smash the face of these casing stones odd but definitely not erosion this is deliberate destruction and defacing. Next is this. Apparently, it's a quarry, although unlike any other quarry I've ever seen. So to me, this doesn't look like a quarry. It looks like foundations, building foundations. You decide for yourself what you think it is. Finally, I'm going to leave you with a thought about the Sphinx. Now, my theory, my belief, is that over the years the sphinx has evolved into what we see today but originally nothing to do with a sphinx i think it was part of the pyramid complex and served a function but originally not a lion and no human head on it just a functional building and if you were to look for a second sphinx i would dig here till next time take care of yourself